Hi everyone, welcome to Rachel's studio and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about an advanced technique that I use to create this bunny painting and I've painted this several times but every time I paint this bunny I learn something new because he's got the softest fluffiest fur that is a really fun challenge to me to create that effect with watercolor and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how and I'm going to give you five tips how to master this wet and wet fur out technique. If you're interested in learning from me more closely or you want to watch this from beginning to end, this will be up on my Patreon in about a week. So be sure to join me over there where you'll also get access to over 90 other tutorials if you join. And be sure to check out the description below for all kinds of links to goodies, free tutorials I've done, and my Facebook group, my Patreon group, and lots more. But let's go ahead and get started with today's tutorial. All right, my first tip is to paint big and on the right paper. Now here I'm painting on eight by 10 inch paper, which goes against my advice. I would say if you're a beginner, especially, or you, if you don't have as much experience with this technique, use a larger piece of paper. I have a lot of practice painting this technique, so I'm able to control it a little bit better. But if you paint larger, then you're gonna be able to control where you keep your edges. So there's gonna be lots of blooms and blossoms and it's gonna be harder to control the smaller you paint. So paint on a larger piece of paper so that you have more room to let the paint bloom out. And the reason, and that is the reason, is because this paint blooms out using this technique. Also, you have to use the right paper. I use Arsh Cold Press 140 pound paper because it's very reworkable and the paint just spreads on it beautiful because of the way it's sized. So the furred out look is more easily achieved on this paper. And the next tip I have is to get the whole painting wet except where you want hard edges. And I wish I would have made the top of his face a soft edge too, but I didn't. But you'll notice I painted around his face and I kept his eyes dry and I also kept his ears dry because I want those ears to retain their really cute shape and it would just be too hard to keep them soft and they don't really have as soft edges as the rest of the body of the bunny. So you want to get the whole painting wet except where you want your hard edges and you don't want your paint puddling. You just want it glistening and then you see here, I'm painting in the first layer and this is the best time to get in your shadows and your contours because later on it'll be harder to rework these areas. You will be able to, but get those lights in first, If you, especially if you're painting a light animal like this bunny. Get in all the lighter and medium tones before you put in the dark background that creates these soft furry edges if indeed you're painting a light animal. You might need to paint the opposite way that I am if you're painting a dark animal and you want your background light. But this same technique applies whether you're painting a dark animal or a light animal, which is painting wet on wet. This is what we call wet on wet when you get the paper wet and you get your, your brushes pretty wet. Now I'm using about tea to milk consistency and if you're not familiar with these terms tea to milk consistency, you're not familiar with the paper terms uh, buckling or glistening, then be sure to watch my fur series and my beginner basics series and I will link a couple videos specifically that talk about paper moisture levels and also thickness of paint consistencies that are really important to understand to be able to do this technique especially when I put that black in and here you'll see me getting my lamp black and for this actual painting I used paint straight from the tube because I wanted it very cream consistency. Cream consistency is when you use paint when you use paint basically straight from the tube and add a little bit of water and you do want to um, mix it up. You want to mix that water completely into the paint although it's not a lot of water. And you can see here how very thick that paint is. I'm putting it on very cream consistency paint. One mistake I'm making here is I should have used a bigger brush because I need to cover a lot of ground and a bigger brush would have been better. I forgot, you know, when you're working this technique, you really have to move fast. You've got to work when your paper is wet and not too wet and not too dry. Again, this does take practice, but I'm using cream consistency 
Daniel Smith Lamp Black. My next bit of advice is to babysit your edges. So what you see happening over there on his backside is the paint is coming in coming in over his haunches where I don't want it. I want his little tushy area, backside area more rounded. So in a minute, you're gonna see me take, here I'm just trying to just use push technique, which is putting little half drops of clear water to push. Um, I'm putting it not on the black paint, I'm putting it next to the black paint in the light area to try to push into that black and that wasn't working. So now I'm wringing out my brush and using it like a sponge to dab up some paint. And um, I do believe I'm also gonna use a tissue to be more aggressive with that because I could see it was just really, um, in, it was coming in over the bunny's backside more than I wanted it to. So I dabbed up pretty aggressively there, which is better if you don't have to because your edges will be so much more organic and really beautiful, but I, was still able to get this to work. And the next thing I'm gonna do after I dabbed up all that excess paint and water that was coming in over his backside is I put some clear drops of water again to push into that black paint. So that's my push technique. I do have a whole video about my push technique where it's basically um, using the power of the cauliflower. Um, watercolor tends to cauliflower where you drop um, more wet bits of paint into drier areas of paint, but it's still all got to be moist. It will cauliflower and create these lighter areas. Okay, so my last tip again is to use any color you want, but again, this lamp black is a special color. You can use any paint color for this technique. They will all do these really pretty soft wet and wet edges that look fluffy and soft, but the Daniel Smith watercolor paint, Lamp Black, goes one step further and creates these long furs. And especially in this painting where that happened was along the backside of the bunny, you'll see the upper backside got really beautiful. Um, long strands of fur looking texture. And it's because of this Lamp Black. So uh, I do get comments a lot I always hear advice, don't use straight black from the tube. Well, it just depends on what your goals are. And yes, you can get more nuanced colors and um, more uh, interesting variations in color when you don't use straight lamp black. And also, most blacks have a drying shift, which means they go from dark when you put them on wet, and then as they dry, they get lighter and lighter. And so that's called a drying shift, but this Daniel Smith Lamp Black is the brand that has the least drying shift that I've ever been able to find. And if you use it cream consistency on somewhere between glistening and buckling paper, buckling paper real quick is when your paper starts to absorb the water at least for 140 pound. 300 pound paper doesn't do this but 140 pound will start absorbing the water and start buckling up and that is a very clear indication you need to start your wet and wet application of thick paint. But look at that edge over his hind quarter, how it's furring out, I love that. And I'm always trying to figure out how to get that technique even more extreme where I'm getting more and more furred out edges and what I found works best is dropping in clear water and using this Daniel Smith Lamp Black paint that furs out so beautifully. So I'm, see I'm putting a little bit of clear water there. And just know when you do this, every time you paint with this technique, it will be different. <laughs> you might think that I really planned for it to come out exactly like this, but I did not. I didn't think those long strands of fur would come out over his backside. And I just loved how it did that. The painting almost paints itself and has a will of its own. And you need to let that process happen to some extent. You do need to babysit, but then you also let it need to do what it's gonna do with these wet and wet techniques. That is the beauty of watercolor, that it will do what it wants to do. And there will be surprises that you like. There will be surprises that you do not like. And you as an artist can do as much as you can to babysit it, but then just let it do its thing. And so every single painting will be different. That's why I've painted this bunny so many times 
and they each look extremely different. They look like totally different paintings. And that's the fun of doing these studies. And when you do these wet and wet techniques, um, especially this very wet and wet fur out technique, it takes a lot of practice. So do a lot of tries, do a lot of studies, be patient. Again, go watch all my fur series and go watch all my beginner's basics to understand how water consistencies in your brush and on your paper interact with the paper you use, the paper matters, and um, to some extent, the paint matters. And now you can see what this looks like after it's dry and see how much it lightened up. Even this Daniel Smith lightens up quite a bit. It has quite a drying shift, but I love the long furs over the backside. So that is the goal. And I just wish that I would have done those short hairs wet and wet too. And the secret to that would have been to paint the rest of the body of the bunny, which has longer furs. And then when my paper is a little drier, you've got to be opportunistic when you're a watercolor painter, especially. You got to paint in the areas of the painting when they are best and most amenable to the techniques and the look you want. So if I would have painted on drier paper, still damp, but drier, I could have gotten softer edges and still gotten those shorter hairs that are on the top of his face. And I just think that is the one thing I would love to paint this again. That's why I paint these bunnies over and over. I learn something new each time I paint this bunny and add that to my repertoire so the next time I paint it, it looks even better. So I might just have to paint this again and practice my short fur hair wet and wet technique where I work on dryer paper. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe and like this painting. Come and chat me up in the comments. That all really helps this channel grow because that tells the algorithm that you love me. Then I can get my videos in front of more people. Thank you so much to my Patreon members who make this channel possible. Come watch me paint this bunny. And just a little bit more information about my Patreon. If you join at the $13 and up tier, you will get access to all my old and new content. If you join at the $8, level, you will get access to 90 plus tutorials. If you join at the $5 level, you will get access to over 60 tutorials. So I would probably even suggest that you join at the $5 level, see how you like it, and then graduate up from there if you decide that you want to go on this journey a little deeper. I will say my $8 tutorials tend to be the better ones, my older tutorials are kind of a mess and I was learning how to do tutorials and I continue to learn just like you guys and I love going on this journey with you so I do hope you'll join me there but I do have a lot of free content so be sure to check out my description below and come say hi on Facebook, come share your art with me on Facebook, I'd love to see you there. I will see you next week so be sure to subscribe if you like my, con my content, don't subscribe if you don't like my content because the algorithm doesn't like that when my subscribers don't click on my content. So thank you so much for watching and now go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.